Hello guys and welcome back to another class of our course about the complete introduction to programming with Java. So basically in the past few classes we talked about different data types, variables, and uh, basically how everything works. And uh, what I want to do in this class is once again uh, working out with uh, those uh, data types and basically use them to create different operations. So for the moment, I don't want to make too complicated things, working with Booleans or adding some text, um, but I really want to make uh, some basic calculations. So basically using Java as a really basic calculator. So what I want to talk about uh, today are uh, the typical mathematical operations that you guys can find. So basically the sum, the subtraction, the multiplication and the division. So pretty much uh, simple and I want to make it a little bit uh, more complex by using variables. So basically storing numbers inside of variables and uh, basically working with those numbers. So let's start. All right. Um, so basically, if you guys want to make basic operations with uh, Java, it's pretty simple. So first thing that uh, you need, well, you simply need to write down the operation that you want to make and it will automatically be created. So let's say I want to make uh, a, uh, well, any type of operation. So system.out.println. And let's say I want to make an addition of five plus 10. So I'll write down five plus 10. Great, so right now we have our operation right here. And when we run it, what's gonna happen in our terminal? we will have the answer to this operation. We can do pretty much the same thing here. So let's say I wanna multiply five by 10. So same thing will happen. What's gonna happen it will give us 50. As you can see, it's uh, pretty simple. Same thing if I divide the 10 by five, 10 divided by five, So once again, as you can see, it will give us two. All right, so basically until now, it's uh, pretty simple. So what we need, uh, well, those are, are some of our basic operations. We can also do the subtraction. Um, but uh, what we can also do is basically store our numbers inside of uh, variables and basically make operations with our variables. So instead of simply writing down our numbers right here, we can basically use variables. So this is exactly what we're going to do. Um, so for the purpose of this course, the data types that we are going to work with are pretty simple. We are mostly going to work with doubles, uh, but we're also going to work with the integers, uh, but mostly doubles. This is uh, really the most uh, simple to work with. Why? Because uh, there is a little problem when you work with integers. So let's say, for example, here I'm dividing 10 by 5. It gives me 2. So technically, this data type is an integer. But let's say I'm dividing 10 by 6. It should uh, give us something like 1.8 uh, something, if I'm not mistaken. So if I uh, run it, what's going to happen? It will give us 2 as an answer as well. So, well, it give us 1. So basically, what it's happening is that it gives us an answer in the form of an integer. So basically, when you have an answer in the, in the form of an integer, we don't have uh, no decimals and this is a problem. So this is why I prefer using doubles, even if it takes more space, basically for the purpose of learning Java. Um, because in this case, uh, our goal is not necessarily to have complete numbers like one, two, three, four, is really having the exact numbers. So this is exactly what we're going to do. So this is the main reason why we're going to work mostly with doubles. All right, so let's start. So we will keep this line of code because we're going to reuse it. But for now, what we're going to do, we are going to create our variables. Um, so like always, uh, well, how exactly I want to create my variables? That's pretty simple. So first of all, what exactly we do? So when you guys start programming in Java, first thing you need, as I said, is your class, then your method. And then we can create our variable and store in everything inside of them. So how exactly we create a variable? Pretty simple. Uh, first thing, we write down the data type. So in this case, we will use double as data type. Then the name of our variable. So once again, we're going to use var1, 2, 3, until 10. So we'll call it double var1. So here we go. We have our first variable, which is var1. And it will be equal to, let's say, 5. So we have our first variable right there. Um, our second variable, let's say it's gonna be var2. So we'll create uh, different variables. So double var2. 
In this case, instead of five, it will be seven. Then we'll have uh, var tree. So once again, double var tree. And it will be equal to, let's say, um, I don't know, 10. And finally, the whoop, little problem, forgot the comment. And finally, we'll have the last one, which will be double, in this case, var 4, which will be equal to 20. Great. So right now we have everything that we need. So what we'll do right now is uh, pretty simple. Uh, how exactly we can have operations in Java? So what we can store in our variables first thing we can store uh, numbers so num in this type of variables um, we can store numbers but we can also store operations so what we're going to do we're going to create a fifth variable in which we are going to store a complete operation so basically a simple operation um so how exactly we're going to do this it's uh, pretty simple so once again we're going to write down double and in this case we'll call it var5 and what we'll do inside of this variable is pretty simple. We're going to store an operation. So basically operations uh, can be, for example, var1 plus var2. Don't forget your dot and comma. So right now I have my operation right here, but let's say I want to see the answer of this operation. So I'll just print out var5 and I'm able to run it. So what's going to happen is that right now the operation var1 plus var2 will be var5. So if I print var5, I will generate 5 plus 7. But I'm also able to solve those operations right here. So if, for example, I'm writing down var1 plus var5. What is going to happen is that my answer will be 17. So it will calculate in this case 5 plus 7 plus 5, which is right there. So basically, I'm able to perform my operations in two places. So first place, it will be right here. And second place, I'm able to perform my operations right there as well. So I'm able to store my, my operations inside of variables. And I'm also able to perform operations inside of the print section. Well, basically, where I'm going to print my operations. So if, let's say, I want to have an operation that is a little bit uh, more complex, so that not only contains... Uh, additions but also contains multiplications and divisions i'm able to do so so let's say for example i want to perform uh, var1 in this case plus var3 multiplied by var4 and divided There we go, by var5. Great. So we have a little bit uh, more complex operation right there. So what's going to happen is that it will respect the property of operations, which is pretty cool as well. So let's say, for example, I have all this operation right there. So what's going to happen? It will at first perform multiplications and divisions, then perform additions. So if, let's say, I want to run my operation right there, so as you can see, it gives me it gives me my answer which is 21.66668 um once again right here it's uh, the only reason it gives me this type of answer is because i'm using the double data type if i was uh, using another data type it will give me another answer completely well it's not going to give me another answer completely but it's going to be it's it will give me the answer uh, as a complete number so basically 21 or 22 or 20 so in this case it probably will give me 21 if i'm not mistaken so we can do the test right now. So let's say inst instead of writing down doubles, we're going to use integers and you'll understand why I honestly prefer using doubles. So it's uh, way more easier. So here we go. Just replace uh, your double by int. So pretty simple. Here we go. And let's say we run our operation. So what's gonna happen as you will see right now, we have 21 as an answer. So basically, this is why I prefer using doubles because at the end of the day, uh, my main goal is to have uh, complete numbers. But once again, if you create bigger applications and your goal is, uh, I don't know, is uh, basically not, not having necessarily 
a lot of operations. Um, well, if you create big applications and your goal is uh, working with a huge amount of operations, you maybe want to use other data types because it, it takes less space. But uh, otherwise, I really suggest you to just use the double data type. It's way more easier. All right. Um, now let's say I want to do something pretty cool. So, well, something simple. Um, uh, let's say I want to work with text and uh, as well as uh, numbers. So I can, for example, add another data type right here, call it string. So my computer is lagging a little bit. So pretty simple, I'm able, basically what, I, what I'm trying to say is that I'm able to perform uh, the two things right now. Um, I'm able to work with the string as well as uh, basically numbers. So let's say I'll call it var six. And here, let's uh, say it's going to be hello. Hello. I am. And years old. Oh, forgot something. Same thing right here. String. Var seven. years old so pretty simple now let's say i want to print everything that i have right there how exactly i will do this so basically i will just uh, print right here well i will rewrite this line of code before this line right here so hello i am 21 years old so pretty simple so how exactly i'm going to do this so pretty simple i'll just go right there Well, basically, I can just copy my variables right. Well, my function right there. So I am var six. And here var seven. All right. So right now, if I run all my code, logically, what's going to happen is that um, Java will basically solve this operation right here first. Uh, well, we'll solve all those operations. And basically what's going to happen, it will print my text, which is stored in the variable number six. Then it will print the operation right there. So it's going to solve the operation. Finally, it's going to print the text that is in the variable number seven. So if we run everything, what's going to happen? Um, you will be able to see it right there. So hello, I am 21.66666, eight years old. So yes, once again, it's not uh, on one single line, but we're going to talk about all this in the next few classes. So pretty simple, quick summary of what exactly we have learned in this class. So first thing, basically there are, uh, well, we talked about the four basic operations that you guys can perform. So addition, subtraction, division, and multiplication. Uh, we talked about the fact that you guys can store uh, numbers inside of uh, variables. So this is exactly what we did right there. And it's also possible to store operations. So this is exactly what we did right there. So if you guys want to play around and uh, create more variables and simply, well, try to create operations with more variables, um, it's definitely possible. So let's say here you want to do var1 plus var2 divided by var variable number 3 plus variable number 4 and et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's possible and I suggest, well, I can, uh, I en encourage you to do so this way. You guys will be able to practice a little bit more. Um, so until now, the logic, is pretty simple. Um, another thing that we talked about is, uh, the, well, basically the order. So first of all, when you write down your, uh, well, when you write down this line of code, this line of code will be printed first. Um, this line of code will print it second and this one will be third. So basically there is a certain order. If for example, I take this operation right here and I write it before my variables right there. For example, it's not going to work because once again, I need to declare my variables first. So let's say I'm trying to run it. It's definitely not going to work because I need to declare my variables at first. So they, they're not existing because I didn't declare them. So I need to declare my variables. And then when they are declared, I will be able to use them. So they definitely need to come after um, my, well, after my variable. So my operation or my line of code should come after my variables declaration. So until now, as you can see, it's uh, pretty simple. 
and if you want you can practice everything that we have just uh, learned so that's it for this class guys and see you all in our next class